have the wisdom because remember, everything now is symbolic. The old is symbolic of the new. In the wilderness, he had to kill off a whole generation of people because that generation would not have allowed the younger generation to grow and go and cross over. They didn't believe. They were stuck in religious tradition. The church today is stuck in religious tradition. So they can't cross over. So what do they do? They hinder in God's people from getting the real knowledge of his word in order that they may be able to prosper in this earth. Amen? So the people are stuck in the church. That's why you see today they're coming out of the churches. A lot of people are at home. A lot of people have been hurt. A lot of people said, I will not go to church anymore. Amen? A lot of people were just, just disillusioned with the fact of going into the church because they've been hurt so many times. Amen? Amen? But what they don't understand is God himself is calling them out from amongst yes. the traditional church. We're not a traditional church. Amen? Amen. Amen. We teach that whole Bible. Amen. 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 And so, therefore, he has to get the people to understand how he's operating and how the feast days are attached to their lives. And he cannot get past these old mindsets. Amen? Amen. Because the old mindsets have is the ones that have the people stuck. Amen. They have you, they have God's people stuck in this uh, tribulation. They have them stuck in fear. They got the people of God believing that the bridegroom, who the church is his bride, that he is going to misuse and abuse and throw his very own bride, who he died for, into the pit of hell. The church now is teaching this to us. Now, wouldn't you want to marry someone that's going to kick you out and put you in hell? He's a good God. He is not coming, saints of God, to put his bride in hell. But the church has, there's so much fear going on that they want to preach to you this, this death and, and bring hell and brimstone, fire and brimstone message that the bridegroom himself is going to do these things to you. Amen? He's coming for a bride that he has paid a price for. In other words, a dowry. He paid the dowry price for his bride. He's not going to misuse you and abuse you when he comes to, to, to collect his prize. His bride. Yes. Amen? Amen? But the church is so afraid. They got God's people afraid, but God wants us as a people to know that he's a good God. Yes. And that he loves his people. And he's not trying to sin. His bride that he took stripes for, that he was beaten unrecognizable for, that he was pierced in his side for, amen, that he was spit upon and bruised. Yeah. He paid that price. He did not pay that price to kick you to the curb, amen. to send you to hell. Amen. Amen. But, but the church is afraid because they teach you, if you don't do this, this, and this, you're going to hell. Amen? We don't have a heaven or hell to put God's people in. But the thing God is trying to get across to the people today is, I'm a good God. I love my people. I paid a price. I'm going to collect my bride. Amen? And you're not appointed unto wrath. And now you know you're a big fat sinner and doing all the things that the Bible tells you not to do. Well, then you already know you're operating on the enemy's territory. So therefore, you ought to know that whatever the enemy has in store for you is for you because you're in his territory. But if you're over here on God's common ground where God has said, come out and be ye separated and be ye holy because I'm holy, you don't have to worry about tribulation. Yes. You don't have to worry about taking the mark of the beast. All these things are to scare the people of God. Oh, you're going to get a mark in your hand and you can't eat and you can't drink and you can't buy and you can't sell. This is what they use against God's people. God said, I did not appoint my people unto wrath. Why would God himself pay the price that he's paid for his people and then put you through a test that you cannot pass? Hallelujah. You can't pass a test where you can't eat and you can't drink unless you take the mark. Unless you martyr and die. How do you pass that test? Why would God himself, after he's already paid the price, cause you to have to pay the price, which may cause you to go 
to help or wherever they're sending you. Amen. And not make it in. Come on, somebody. He is a good God. And we got to get that message out to God's people. He's a good God. He's not trying to send us as his people. We don't want to walk around and be in church afraid of everything all of the preachers teaching today. Amen. Because Amen. half of this stuff is symbolic. Amen. Amen. It's not literal. Amen. Amen. That you're not going to come in and take a literal mark in your hand or in your forehead like that. It's not talking about that type. It's an economic system, saints of God, that's getting ready to come and, and take over things. And, amen. In this earth realm. Amen. 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 It's a system. Amen. The beast is a system. Amen. They got the people of God thinking there's some big beast coming up out of the water that's going to scare the heck out of God's people. The beast is a system, an economic system of government. Read it in Daniel 9. Come on, somebody. Amen? So these feast days are so vitally important for us. Now the Feast of Tabernacles, where we are today, final feast day, is, is seven days of celebration, of joy. Because this feast will be the feast that will take place after the final day of atonement. After the door has been shut. He's gathered his people from the four corners. Amen? Amen. And after he's gathered his people, there will be a day of rejoicing. See? Now the church calls it uh, a millennial reign, is what they, they say. You're going to have a millennial reign and, and you're going to be with him for a thousand years. Amen? The Hebraic mindset is he gathers his people from four corners of the earth. Amen? He will close the door of the ark. Amen? At that very day of atonement, and then right after he gathers in his, his people. Amen? In gathering and regathering from where he scattered them to four corners of the earth. He said in the Bible, he said, I've scattered my people, but I will regather you again. Amen? amen. And when he gathers his people and closes the door, amen, it's going to be a time of tabernacling with him. Amen. That is what the Feast of Tabernacles is. It's going to be seven days. Read it in your Bible in, in Leviticus 23. Feast of Tabernacles is seven days, a seven day feast of rejoicing, having a good time in him. You made it in. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then on that very last day, which is called the eighth day, amen, is a new beginning. Hallelujah. New heaven and a new earth. Amen? Amen. amen? amen. So there's definitely differences in what the Bible is actually saying and what the church is teaching us. Amen? But God has to remove that veil from your eye. He has to show you himself. I can tell you all day long, but until God himself comes and reveals these true facts to you, then you will still be stuck in the traditional church. Amen? Amen. You can't get out until God brings you out. Amen. All of us had to come out when he brought us out. Amen? Amen. We, we've been in the traditional church mostly all of our lives. Amen? Amen. Until he took the blinders off of our eyes and showed us the, and the revelation of his scriptures. So this Feast of Tabernacles is when we get our building, we'll celebrate for seven days. Amen. 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 And all it is is a type and shadow of the actual celebration that's going to take place when we tabernacle with him. Amen. 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 The eighth day is called Shemi Aztec, something like that in the Hebrew. It's called the eighth day of the new beginning. Amen. Amen. And so what we want to do, saints of God, is be very, very aware of the seasons and the times that we're in. And this season, at some future day, the fall feast days, is going to let us know that the bridegroom is coming. Didn't they cry out the work tip version, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming, amen? So it wasn't like they didn't know that the bridegroom was coming, amen? They were prepared, and we're all of these feast days is doing no more than preparing us for the day that the bridegroom shall uh, come. Amen. Yes. So what we want to do now, you gotta understand that your fall feast days, Passover, unleavened bread, and Pentecost, Amen, is representing the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Amen. No, it, it, there, there's no Easter in this. Amen. Easter has nothing to do with this. Uh, that's man-made and it's pagan. And it came out of the uh, 
Greek mythology and the Greek gods. And so there's no no place in God's uh, biblical word that was that will say Easter is something that we should celebrate. Amen. But he did say the Passover. <laughs> Amen. And so we celebrate that and it's been fulfilled. Those the death, burial, and resurrection. Those early feast days have been fulfilled, but we celebrate them as remembrance. He said, remember these, amen? Mm -hmm. How we all brought your forefathers out of Egypt. The fall feast days are yet to be fulfilled. It's the day of atonement. It's the tabernacle, amen? Amen. amen. Feast of trumpets, which is Rosh Hashanah, is the warning signal, amen? Yeah. And so all of that is the time to come. So we have to remember that because our actual blessing, saints of God, is attached to each one of these feast days. Now you want to you want to say, well, how do I get blessed? You know, I'm, I'm, I've been struggling. I've been in this thing a long time, and I just I'm not getting the promises that God said that I should get. We have to look at our obedience to His commands. Amen. He said, we didn't say this, and I and I, and I had this conversation with a, a minister uh, from another church that. Uh, you know, you have to really be careful because these preachers don't preach the whole truth. The whole Bible is what he told me. I said, well, you, me, and all other preachers, you, don't, you cannot say that about one or two, that, you, that they have to be careful. Everybody has to be careful. I said, nobody has it all. Everybody has a portion, but nobody has it all. Amen. You really have to be careful yourself by speaking up on that. Amen. Because you don't know. I said, but let me give you an example. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I said, now, you cannot speak against this. He was speaking against another big preacher. I said, you can't speak against this preacher and say that he's not teaching the whole truth when you don't, you don't recognize the Sabbath, but you tell me that you recognize nine other commandments. The nine commandments work for you, but that one don't work for you. I said, how can you take nine commandments of God when he gave you 10 and say, I'm not going to kill, I'm not going to steal, I'm going to honor my mother and father, I'm not going to covet, I'm not going to do all of these things. But that Sabbath day, I'm not going to honor that. When God said himself, set apart, holy. And the reason he set that Sabbath aside as holy because on the seventh day he rested. And he gave it a Sabbath rest to the people of God. But because we have not recognized that the Sabbath day is holy, amen, and, and man came in and changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, caused us as the people of God to lose our blessings. Now there's an overflow of blessings and there's ways that the church is getting money and growing all of this, but it's not God's plan in all of them. Amen. God allowed this for a season. But the season that we're in right now is a season where he's saying, come out from among them and be separated and obey my commandments. And then he said, and this is what I'm going to do for you. Now, what you're doing and obeying the commandments and, and doing what he tells you to do and you're not getting blessed, you are obligated to go before God and say, wait a minute. I'm doing what you told me to do. Isn't that right? I'm obeying all of your Ten Commandments. I'm observing your feast days, your holy days, your high holy days that you said to follow throughout all your generations. Hallelujah. I'm doing everything that you told me to do in your word. God, you're obligated by your word to bless me because in his word he said, I watch over my word to perform it. He said, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish all and all that I command. Amen? And so therefore, God, you are obligated according to your word. And your word cannot lie. That's right. Right. Amen. But see, the people of God have become whips. Afraid to talk to their own God. Afraid to communicate with him one-on-one. -on -one. He knows your in and out. He knows your heart. He knows your good, your bad, and your ugly. Right. But if you can't talk to your father, who He 
bless you. He said, call, reason with me. Talk to me about it. Tell me what's on your mind. Amen. You would rather stay broke, poor, and downtrodden than go before the throne when God has everything. He owns it all, saints of God. Everything in this earth realm belongs to him. And he's your father. And you are not afraid to go and say, God, you said it. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, some of us are going to have to walk some things out. But I'm not just talking about the call and the anointing that's up on your life that, have, that cause you to have to walk out the blessing. Well, you have to walk out the blessing like I have to walk them out because of the anointing. Amen? Yeah. And now I have to go through this for so many years. Amen? Huh? Amen. It's because he said this. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Huh? And at that appointed time, he says, I'm going to bring you out. But he's not going to just bring me out because I have to carry an anointing that's going to break a yoke for God's people. I have to carry an anointing that's going to be able to heal you when you sit. I'm going to have to carry an anointing. So if i got to carry that anointing, then say to God, i got to walk through the fire and through the flood. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you going to your father and you have a need in your life and you want something, you need something, and you're going to say, God, this is what I need you to do. Amen. 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 And if you're not seeing it, go back. You had a church say, oh, you didn't believe it if you got to keep on saying it over and over and over. No, that's not true. Because the Bible says the unrighteous judge, the woman knocked on his door and she knocked on his. She was very persistent. And he was an unrighteous judge. And because of her much knocking on the door and her much wearying him, he opened up the door and gave her what she had need of. God said, commune with me. Yeah. Come on, bring it to my remembrance what I told you. Yeah. If you don't know what the word says, you can't bring it to his remembrance. Yeah. Amen? But if it's in the word of God, mm -hmm. amen, if it's in the word of God and you've got the word on the inside of you, you ought to be able to take some of that word that's on the inside of you and say, God, wait a minute. to do that. Yes. Get bold. He don't want you to be with me. He wants you to come boldly before the throne. Tell him what you have need of. Yes. Quit playing with this thing. Amen. Amen. Quit playing with it. Quit talking about I can't afford it. Quit talking about I ain't got enough money. He has all the money you ever need, yes. saints of God. Yes. One thing about me and my husband, we have never got anything that we got because we have money. We got it because we asked God for it and we believed God and he yes. gave it to yes. us. Hallelujah. We ain't never really been rich people. Amen. But it's nothing that we ask God for that he hasn't given to us. Amen. 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 So no, there's no excuse that I don't have enough money. Where is your faith? Where is your trust in the God that you serve? Amen. That he is able to do abundantly above all that you ask or think. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for God. It's fine. I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care what your situation is. There is nothing oh. too hard for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to get this in your mind, in your heart, and in your spirit. My God is able. Yes. Amen. To do exceedingly, abundantly above what I ask. Yes. Or even what I think. What is it you believe in God for? These feast days are attached to our blessings, saints of God. He said, don't come before me empty-handed. Yeah. He don't want you to come empty-handed because he got a blessing for you. Yeah. Amen. You put your request down. Amen. You sow your seed. You put your request down. Yes. Now, it's not my job to water your seed. It's your job to water your seed. If you got a Rosh Hashanah list from last year and you haven't crossed off things on that list, it's your job to go back and water your seed. You already sowed the seed in the ground. Come on, somebody. You look at that and you go to God and you tell him, wait a minute. These are the things that I requested. I did according to your word when you said, don't come before me empty-handed, but bring all free will offering upon my holy feast days. So I got I obeyed you. And this was the request that I asked of you. Come on, somebody. Y'all sit around and wait on me to tell you and pray for it over and over and over. But I'm telling you, open up your mouth. Yes. And why are you seen with the words of your mouth? Yes. Get 
should not be marking off our list this year. Amen. 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 I went before God and I said, God, this year, I want everybody that put a list in to mark everything off of that list. Yes. When we hit Rosh Hashanah, Hallelujah. 2013, next year, everybody should have marked everything off of that list. Amen. But you're going to water your seed yourself. Amen. 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 When come time to come up here and tell us what God had done for you all throughout the year. Like Miss Pat been doing these last few weeks. Amen. And Minister Diane, who's not here. And, and different ones. Amen. 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 Coming up telling what God has done, how they cross things off their list. I've got people out of town, saints of God, that sow these seeds on the feast day. And they're marking, they're calling me. We mark this off. We mark that off. Yes. Just going right down the list, marking stuff off their list. Yeah, Amen. you got to remember that you got a list. That's why I told you to make two. Yes, yes. Keep it. Look at it. Watch what God is doing. We do that so that you can see. Because a lot of times God bless you and you can't even see the blessing. Amen. <laughs> you done got blessed and you don't even recognize you got a blessing. But if you write it down and, and look at your list and cross it off, you see that this is what God did for you because of the seed that you sow. Amen. See, it's no longer just throwing an offering in the bucket, saints. Amen. You plant your seed for what yes. you need. Yes. There's nobody, no farmer in the land that's going to plant a seed and not expect a harvest. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, they don't teach you that in the traditional church. They tell you, sow your seed. They tell you, pay your tithe. But they don't tell you how to get nothing back. Right. I'm telling you how to get a return on your seed. Right. Amen. 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 You plant your seed and you declare what it is you need and that seed is directed toward it. You direct your seed for whatever you need from God. Amen. This is how you get your blessing. Your blessing doesn't come from your tithe. Your tithe is a command. Your blessings come from the seeds that you sow. Your offerings. That's where your blessings come from. And you can go back and say, God, I, wait a minute. I sowed this seed. And I sowed that seed. I got seed in the ground. I can call up on the seed. Amen. That's right. That's called your heavenly bank account. I can make a withdrawal from my heavenly bank account because I got seed in my heavenly bank account. But if you don't ever put in an offering, saints of God, when you get ready to go to God, God opens up your bank account and there's nothing in it. Come on, somebody. You got to sow some seed to get something. That's why I said you sow and direct your seed for what you need. And these feast days teach us all of this. Nobody's taught us this, saints of God, in the church. We've only been taught how to give. We've not been taught how to receive. Yes. Amen. Amen. God wants his people on the receiving end. Amen. Amen. He wants us blessed. He wants us to bless to be a blessing. Yes. And this is what these feast days are all about. Amen. They tell a story. They tell a story that's attached to our lives from our very forefathers. Who he brought out of Egypt. Tested in the wilderness. Caused them to cross over. Told them that they're going to fall into idolatry. And told them that when they do, I'm going to scatter you to the nations. We're not here because our father, our great-grandfather, got up one day and said, I'm going to move to America. We're not here, saints of God, because we just thought, oh, America is a good place to live. You were scattered here, and we came here on the slave ship, saints of God. Yeah. Our forefathers fell in idolatry, amen? Right. And they was captive and brought to this country, enslaved, amen. slaves. We were the part of God's people, amen? The seed of Abraham that was scattered to the nation because our forefathers fell in idolatry. That's why we're here. Amen. That's why he has to gather us back from this place. Amen. 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 It's just the way it is. But if we don't understand the feast days, if we don't understand what he's telling us, we'll still be running around here talking about we're going to fly away. We won't be talking about being gathered in, in gathered and regathered. We'll be still talking about flying away and disappearing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which is not biblical. Amen. We're not flying away and we're not disappearing, saints of God. I know what they taught you. But you've got to get a revelation of God's word. Right. Yeah. And it's hard, especially for us as 
of seniors because of what we've been taught and what's been embedded in us all of our lives. But you have to have what you call a teachable spirit. You have to be open to the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to say, you know what, God? I recognize that there is more to you than what they've been telling me. I know that there's more to this Bible than the same old story every year after year after year. Every little Christmas program about baby Jesus and every little Easter program with the little speeches. Come on, somebody. God said there's more to him than these little programs that they're putting on. And at some point in time in our life, we as the people of God has to stand up and say, God, I want more of you. Give me the truth of your word. Amen. Either you want the truth or you don't want the truth. Amen. It's not going to make me no difference, saints, because I got to have the truth. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because the Bible says, if you don't believe the truth, he said, I'll bring you a diversion so that you will believe a lie. Second Timothy. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So you've got to want the truth of God so that you can get what he's trying to get to us in these end times. We are the end time generation that's going to bring in and sweep in this next move of God for the future generation. Where the forerunners, it's not going to be that old church stuff as usual. Yes. Amen. God's trying to get something in the earth realm through a people. Through his chosen people. Amen. 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 It's going to be us, saints of God, who gets this into the earth realm. And there's many more little small group gathering churches just like ours that's teaching the feast days of God. That's teaching that God said remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That's still non-denominational churches but teaching the whole Bible and not just teaching part of the Bible. Who recognize that man changed the very canon that we look at and call the Bible. Changed the holy days to holidays. Come on somebody. God said this is what you should do. And we as the people of God Got to be about his business and be about doing what he said do so that we can get this into our children yes. and our grandchildren and the future yes. generation that's going to rule and reign here on this earth long after we're gone. Yes. This earth ain't going nowhere. Amen. Amen. This earth been around for billions of years, saints of God. You wonder, why, well, wait a minute. God said there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Saints of God, you're the new heaven and the new earth. I hate to bring that news to you, but this is earth. All this flesh is nothing but earth. Man. You come from the dust of the earth, saints of God. Yeah. This is the earth. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen? Yeah. What did the Bible say uh, in Luke 20? He said, when they say the kingdom of God is coming, he said, don't go over there and don't go over here. Yes. He said, don't go. Don't believe it. Why? Because it's inside of you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Amen. You're the new heaven and the new earth. Hallelujah. Amen. This earth been here for billions of years. And God himself created this earth yes. for man. Yes. He didn't create heaven for man. Amen. It's just the way it is. He said, I created this heaven and earth and separated it and said, let me make a man and put him in the garden. God didn't say, I created this earth and separated the light from the darkness, and then I'm going to take man up to heaven and live. He had the heaven is for the angels and the host, but the earth is for man. God's original plan was the Garden of Eden. Amen? We're going back to his original plan, which was called the Garden of Eden. Amen? <laughs> Yeah, I feel you, but it don't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. God created this earth for us. I know what we said. We're going to heaven. That, that garden of Eden is going to be your heaven. Because if we do not go back to the garden of Eden, then Satan can stand up and tell God, I got you. And there's no way that Satan is going to be able to stand up and tell God, I got you. I destroyed your plan. He's not that big and he's not that bad. He can't destroy the plan of God. The plan of God from the very beginning is create man and female, put them in the garden, let them multiply and replenish the earth. Adam failed. He might have tricked Adam and Eve, but he didn't trick God because God told them in the day that you partake, you're going to die. Amen? So now all of this living from the time of the Garden of Eden until now to the Day of Atonement is all about one thing, God's original plan for man. Yeah. Going to the garden, being in the garden of Eden, living holy, walking in the cool of the day with the God that you serve. Yeah. Yes. 
Come on, somebody. And all of these feast days point directly to what God is telling us he's going to do in these end times. Amen. 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 So we're going to be tabernacling uh, with him, having a good time. We were supposed to do a good shout feast today, but I didn't have the music. Amen. But nevertheless, amen. amen. This is it. It closes out. And then we go to the new beginning. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close. I was up early yesterday morning. It was just ironic to me because I know these feast days and how they operate. And I said, okay, Lord, we're in the Feast of Tabernacles. And when the Feast of Tabernacles 